Let's welcome uh, Christopher Chope, the member for Christchurch. Sir Christopher was booked on the show to talk about the victims of the COVID vaccines, whose day in Parliament this was meant to be. We're going to get back to that next week, assuming we get a day between imploding governments. Frankly, I'd much rather talk about those uh, vaccine victims. Um, but uh, Sir Christopher is here for the politics of the night. And um, you are, uh, you're uh, basically steamed about all this kind of chaos and you think uh, we need just to bust out of the cycle of chaos once and for all? I, I do, just that, uh, Mark. And I, I'm, I'm absolutely disgusted by the behaviour of my colleagues. And I think that the only way forward now for the Conservative Party and, more importantly, for the country is for there to be a general election called by whoever is elected as the leader uh, next week. And then we will be able to have a proper debate across the nation on what's important in terms of economic policy and the decisions that we take. And I think that gives the Conservatives the best chance that they're going to have of coming back from what otherwise looks a dire situation. Well, are you, uh, you, you seem very sure about that. So I take it you're not put off by these opinion polls showing Labour 33 points ahead and on course to win 507 seats, uh, which would mean that a 52-seat Scottish National Party would be His Majesty's loyal opposition. You, you have no fear that that's the territory we're looking at uh, come Election Day? Well, I, obviously, I, I fear that uh, we are going to find um, it very difficult at the next general election. But I think it's going to be a heck of a lot like more difficult if we try and delay that uh, day. And why doesn't the Conservative Party go back on the front foot and gain the confidence of the people by saying, look, we realise we're in a complete mess. We realise that our parliamentary party is ungovernable. And, and I think that's another issue we can come on to. And as a result, we think that we trust the British people to take their decision on who should run this country at this time of economic and political crisis. Do you think there is a unity candidate out there? Because when you look at these names, um, Lady Hoey uh, is not very impressed by the thought of Rishi Sunak at number 10. And there no, are no. other people well, who don't want to see... Uh, no, no, and nor am I. So I, I hope many of your <laughs> colleagues feel the same. But but uh, there are people who do not want to see Boris Johnson back because that just means more party gate, more stuff like that. And then there are other people who are looking around for a neither of the above candidate and all the neither of the above candidates seem to have fled. Is there such a thing as a unity candidate? I haven't found or seen one yet. And I think the problem is that there's so much ill discipline, ill will within the parliamentary party that anybody who becomes prime minister will not be able to command a mandate from the Conservative parliamentary party unless that person has also got a mandate from the British people. That's why I think a general election is the right answer, not just for our party, but also for the nation. So, so even though it is constitutionally correct that the king is entitled to call on whoever can command a majority in the House of Commons, as a practical matter, after the last three, four, five months, uh, that's, that's not doable in a real-world sense. Well, Mark, the irony is that neither Boris nor Liz were ever the victims of a motion of no confidence carried against them in the House of Commons. If they had been, then what I would have been able to say they didn't command the majority within the House of Commons. What I regret is that both of them resigned when I think they still did enjoy uh, a majority within the House of Commons. And uh, so we're now in a situation of our own making where I think the only way out is to have this general election I'm talking about. So, so in fact, your point is that if, there, if we have inflicted damage on the constitutional order, it's been by these uh, frivolous uh, leadership elections rather than by anything that we actually should have done if we were doing things properly. 
Exactly. It's been by the, the systematic undermining of first Boris Johnson and now Liz Truss by people who, for their own particular reasons of ambition, uh, wanted to uh, get rid of uh, Boris, and they thought that they would inherit the crown. When they didn't inherit the crown, mm. uh, they then wanted to get rid of the person who had in inherited the crown, Liz. And now they think, having got rid of Liz, that they're going to be able to get uh, Rishi in. Well, I think they've got another thing coming. If, if Rishi was to be elected as leader of the Conservative Party, he would be an incredibly divisive figure. And he doesn't enjoy the support of, of a large number of Conservative MPs. And he certainly doesn't enjoy the support of a lot of people in the party in the country. So um, I think that if we could find this magical unity candidate about whom you speak, um, that, that, that might be a way forward. But I don't see any such person emerging. Just a quick final question. Um, you know, older viewers will remember turbulent times in the Tory party. Uh, Heath and Thatcher. Uh, Alec Hume, the 14th Earl. Oh, he's not modern and trendy enough. We have to go to a new system. If you remember those, or even Sewers, uh, Anthony Eden, if you remember those disputes, uh, there's something, uh, the insanity now is at a fever pitch that would be unimaginable, even in, uh, even going back to Eden or Alec Hume or Heath or whatever. I mean, is this party salvageable? Well, I, I don't know. Um, this is, we're about to elect the 10th leader of the Conservative Party since I became a Conservative MP which gives you some sort of a scale <laughs> of, of, on this. Now, I, I think it's mm. going to be, uh, we're, we're in very troubled times. And what has broken down is the basic discipline, the respect for the office of prime minister, the respect for the leadership of the, the party. And we saw in the House of Commons last night an example of uh, colleagues, many of them new to parliament, relatively speaking, uh, who don't really understand mm. how, it, how it should operate. And it should operate on the basis mm. of respect for the people who have been elected to their positions. And Liz Truss was elected by 58 percent of the Conservative Party mm. membership to her position. But that was never accepted by a lot of my colleagues who are undemocratic by nature. Uh, no, that's that's right. And, uh, and and as I said earlier, it's coming to hold the office in contempt, not just the office holder. Thank you, Sir Christopher Chopin.